Administrators updated parents about it in a Facebook post. Navigating connectivity issues during at-home learning is something that I actually asked uh, a Ferrant education consultant about recently. Here is a bit of my conversation with Courtney Green. All right, Courtney, thanks for joining us. We want to get straight to it. For a lot of parents, we pay the bill for the internet and expect that it's going to work uh, until it doesn't, of course. What are some tips for not-so-tech-savvy parents if they're having some connectivity or computer issues? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first step would absolutely be to breathe. With all of the in-home learning and all of the changes happening, connectivity issues are happening across the country and across the state and across different cities. And so I think from te the teacher's perspective, there's a lot of understanding. And so technology can be frustrating for all of us. So I think the very first step would be to breathe. And then there are actually some very practical things that families and parents and even students can do um, to see what's sort of going on um, with the technology or possibly the internet. Um, the first thing I would do is to determine if you think the issue is actually coming from the device or is it coming from the internet? Um, sometimes there can be some confusion between that for families, um, but if you do determine that the issue is with the internet, the first thing I would do um, or that I would recommend would be to go ahead and try a different browser. Sometimes there are platforms and programs that work better with Google Chrome, for example, over Firefox. All right, Courtney, many families are limited to certain internet service providers based on where they live. How important is it to have those options? And if options are available, what type of specs should parents be looking for? Absolutely, so having options is ideal. Um, it's gonna be super important in this really new season that we're in. And so one thing that parents and families can do is to actually look at getting a Wi-Fi extender or booster that will help um, especially again with multiple kids um, in the household doing in learn in home learning. And so none of this is cheap. None of you know setting up a home learning environment is is feasible yeah. for everyone. So what are some essentials mm -hmm. uh, that parents should really prioritize? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I would do and recommend for parents is to check with the school or the district um, to see if they are at least. Um, providing a laptop, right? If they are not, um, there are some inexpensive laptops available. A Chromebook, for example, is roughly $200. That can still be extremely expensive for families in this season, um, but they would, it is a um, sort of low grade device that can be used for internet, for webcam, um, microphone, it's sort of everything built in one, as opposed to finding multiple um, devices. Your company, Ferrant Education, specializes in preparing students for college entrance exams. Uh, are virtual lessons a part of that process for you? And if so, uh, what has it been like? Have you been able to make most of them? Yeah, um, so we've been fortunate. We've been using Zoom since before COVID even began. Um, and we utilize all of the aspects of Zoom. Um, we use that for our test prep sessions. We use that for um, even our college admission consulting meetings. We actually even were able to use it to proctor, um, virtually proctor an online ACT and SAT this spring. Um, it's helpful because we can share screens. Um, we can utilize the whiteboard feature um, as well as the annotating feature. So it's been very easy. I'm super thankful that we have this, this technology to use. It's a lot to navigate through right now. Courtney with Verat Education, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.